Howdy everybody, Dave here again at the Fly Shop for a, another Tuesday time tip. Last week we trimmed a deer hair fly that we had already, I'd spun up the morning before. Um, today I'm going to show you how to, or how I um, spin deer hair, spin and pack deer hair. A couple tools that you're going to need and materials, super important just like almost every time when you tie a fly, uh, material selection is super important. A lot of parts of a deer, um, bucktail, you know, that we use a lot for streamers and stuff like that when we're looking for movement. Um, the thing with bucktail is it's really thin, not hollow, um, especially in the tips. It's hollow down on the bottom. You can get it to flare up and, you know, and stuff like that at the bottom, but the tips you can't really get to because they're not hollow. Um, what you need to use for spinning deer hair, absolutely important. It's going to be very, very, oh, that's the wrong bag. Um, use deer belly hair okay doesn't matter the color you pick any color you like deer belly hair super important body hair is not the same thing as belly hair body but you're looking for belly hair um the reason why is it's really thick really coarse extremely fat stuff um has uh the best stuff has this crinkle to it in my and in, in, if you ask me um if you can see that crinkle in there that's the best stuff I don't care about tips. I'm going to cut them off anyways. I don't care about anything else other than I want looking for really thick, easy to spin stuff. The thicker it is, the easier it is to spin around the hook shank. Um, the other thing that's really important is your thread selection. I actually, you know, sometimes go actually bigger. I'll go to Kevlar thread sometimes for this stuff. But what you're looking for is a large diameter thread um, with a high break strength. 210 um, works pretty well for me. Um, you know, if, if you have trouble breaking thread, this is this is something I'll probably break through. I'll break thread here just to show you how I restart it, or I'll probably do it on accident and make it seem like I did it on purpose. Um, but uh, we'll do that just to show you how to restart your thread too when you're tying one of these bugs, because that's probably one of the more common things you're gonna run across. Um, another thing that's really important that I talked about last week was some type of hair scissors, and, and it'll say right on the packaging if it's a hair scissor or not. And the, the biggest difference is, is there'll be these serrations, and you can't really see it. I can barely see them on here, but there's some serrations on there that make trimming uh, hair in general, including synthetics and things like that, um, much easier. It'll make a nice, nice, uh, you're not going to get that where you just kind of flatten out the material that doesn't actually cut. I'm using the uh, Loon um, hair scissors today. I used TMCO last week. Um, I used Loon today. Switch it up a little bit. Um, Get yourself a nice bobbin with a ceramic tip again to to uh, to um, you know reduce thread breakage. We don't even sell. I don't bother carrying anything that doesn't have a ceramic tip anymore. I wouldn't use it myself. I wouldn't recommend you use it. It's just it's it's like a couple bucks more for the, that ceramic tip, and they don't get burrs on them. They don't shred your thread. Non ceramic tips are garbage. We shouldn't they shouldn't even make them anymore. If you ask me. Um, this is super important as well. I bought one of these the day they came out. I think it's the coolest tool out there um, it doesn't look like much now it's gonna look like a lot more once we start spinning this stuff up um, it's called the uh, Cohen's uh, fugly packer Pat Cohen if you don't know is a insanely good uh, deer hair tire um, look up his stuff his, it'll blow your mind he's got some insane stuff that he does um, this is also super important that under fur on this once I cut this there's gonna be this I mean it's like dubbing this stuff that's gonna be, you'll see once I once I actually make this cut here, uh, this stuff down here, it's got a ton of under fur in there and it's like super fine dubbing. It's like, looks just like it. And what, if you leave that in there, you're not gonna spin, it, your, your deer hair isn't gonna spin properly because that that um, real thin under fur binds up the hair and won't allow it to spin properly. Um, so that said, um, hook doesn't matter. Um, I'm tying on a Renzetti vise. Just, Tie on something that has a big hook gap, um, long enough shank to tie your bug. Um, uh, use whatever hook you like. I'm using a uh, TFS hook, the uh, Saltwater uh, 7258 in a 3-aught. Um, it's pretty good, pretty good size, and I like the profile for a you know a smaller bass popper. Um, all right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is start my thread back here, and I, I mentioned last week that I always tie the the deer hair bit first. Um, and what I mean by that is I don't, I don't, I'm not actually going to like for when I really tie this fly, I'm not going to actually tie my hackle off the back, my flash off the back quite yet. 
because I like I like being able to when I'm packing this deer hair I like being able to take my fingers back here and you know what I mean press it together when you tie something in back here it'll really mess up those feathers and will kind of be all over the place um, I tie it in afterwards um, that's not that difficult another thing that I don't do that a lot of people do is a lot of people will be like oh you're spinning deer hair lay down a thread base I do not lay down a thread base I think it spins better without a thread base so bear hook shank selection super 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 important um, where you grab the these are all pretty good all this all this hair is pretty good as far as quality and stuff like that um, but how much you grab is really important um, most people will say you know the diameter of say like a number two pencil which what I would say you know is right around that amount a lot of times if I have thicker thread I'm going for like sharpie you know the size of a sharpie which is I don't know turn it a turn it a little more there you go um, a little bit fatter with this 210 um, I think I'm gonna go with that 210 denier is what I'm talking here on this thread uh, I'm gonna go with that number two pencil diameter um, just because I don't know if that 210 is gonna be strong enough to to uh, take out that uh, that um, sharpie size so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get my selection of, of deer hair tips don't matter we're not gonna align tips on this um, and I'm gonna pinch grab cut with my deer hair scissors so I get a nice even perfect little cut and then I'm going to show you what that under fur looks like we're going to brush it out you get these little tiny pieces out of here too this stuff's actually really good there isn't much under fur in it you'll notice that too like different manufacturers you're going to have more of the junk and uh, hairline's about as good as it gets so you're not going to have there's very little under fur in this one almost none um so there we go. I'm gonna take this like that. I'm gonna put it on almost like a 45 degree angle from the hook. So when I put it down, I'm gonna put it like this up against the hook shank. So if you can see that there, and I'll spin this back the way I had it. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting this on a 45 degree angle from the, uh, on the, um, the shank of the hook. I'm gonna give myself one, and I'm just real loose wrapped. So you can see the hair's not even flaring up quite yet. One two loose wraps. I'm gonna put my finger right here on the, um, the, the side of the, uh, the hair and I'm gonna start to kinda pull down on this and it's gonna flare up my hair and it's gonna start to spin, right? And I can use my finger and cheat and stop it if I don't want it to go all the way around the hook shank. But see, as I, as I tighten down, oh, it flares up like that. All right, and now what I like to do is that's just a, that's two or three turns on there. I'm gonna give myself just kind of over these butt sections. I'm gonna give myself a couple of just locking wraps like this. Just I'm just moving my thread back and forth so I don't trap um, a bunch of material. Um, now what I used to do and what you you guys all have probably done in in the past is you take this and you kind of push it back and you get it where you want it to be and that's fine um, and it, especially with this small amount right here that's all I really need to do um, this isn't really gonna come into play here for a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these out of the way I'm gonna get myself a couple locking wraps around just the shank it really helps keeping this from rotating around the hook shank um, which you do not want um, and then you just keep going from there. You keep doing that same thing, that same size. I feel like I could get a little more than that last one I did was only, didn't seem like it was much. Let's see how, let's see how the thread reacts to this here. This one I feel like there's a little more under fur in it. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but on that comb right there, that under fur stuff, that, that uh, this kind of stuff that just fell off there, that, uh, that's what you're trying to get out of, out of this clump. That's what binds up those butt section or those um, the butt ends of the fiber there, the hair there. So same thing. I'm gonna put it on a 45 degree angle. Just do your best not to trap stuff. It's not gonna matter a whole heck of a lot. Um, but we'll do one, two loose wraps. I'm gonna tighten down, and as I feel it start to kind of rotate around the hook shank, I'm going to rotate with it and let this stuff kind of just flare up like that just like that give me one more just to lock her in place real nice and um, and I'm I'm applying quite a bit of pressure here um, you know um, 
to the point where you can almost hear this thread cracking. When I start hearing it cracking, I know I'm, 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 I'm good. Um, you know, I don't need to go any more than that. Um, so we'll do the same thing. And how I'm using this, there's a little hole right there, and that's where your shank's gonna go in that hole. And you're just going to, you know, use these for your leverage, right? And just push it down. So I have my thumbs against that back, that back clump, and I'm just pressing it together pretty tightly. And then same deal, I'm just gonna work my way forward, get a couple locking wraps around the front of the shank. And you just keep doing that until you have a body built up or this just, it's kind of a mess. Um, if you watch last week's video, you'll see kind of what I, what I trimmed down and it's gonna look, it just looks like a total mess until you cut it into a head, shape it. Do the same thing, get that under for out of there and those little short pieces. What if they didn't watch it last week? The, you can go to Vimeo and uh, YouTube and, and check out last week's video. Um, if you want to know how to trim this, we kind of did them in the opposite order, but um, we had a bunch of people ask if we could do a spinning one to get to that point. Um, so same deal, just crank her down, rotate with it. And yeah, any questions you have on this or anything else, I love talking about fly tying and all that stuff. So give us a call. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on spinning deer hair. You can cheat too. Um, I've seen people do that with pretty good results. I usually don't. Um, you don't really need to. But if you have, if you have, um, you know what? We'll do a, we'll do an example, and it'll I'll show you how to cheat and to get little spots. If you're looking to get like, you know, little spots on your frog or something. Um, I'm just gonna like look how much space you make up right there. I just I just gained you know an eighth of an inch practically um, by using this this tool right here. Um, now if I stopped it from spinning, so like I'll, I'm obsessed with white bellied. Um, they just for me they work really well in here here in California anyways. They work really well. But like so if I if I wanted a white belly or if I wanted a little green spot on the top. Um, I would take a smaller chunk because I just want a little spot. Not, I don't want it to spin around the whole hook shank, so I don't need quite as much. Just do a little bit here. So just smaller than a number two pencil that is about. You see all that garbage coming out of there, the short pieces and the under fur. And uh, yeah, so if you get a spot or to uh, keep it from rotating around the hook shank, it's exactly the same, exactly the same. You're gonna put it on a 45 degree angle, two loose wraps, whoop, I grabbed a bunch of black there, let's move that out of the way. So two loose wraps, bam, bam. And then instead of letting it rotate around the hook shank, I'm gonna hold it there with my finger as I let it flare up. So I flared that thing up and my finger's in the, in the way. Now, I stopped it from rotating around the hook shank. You can see there's very little on the bottom, and I can always fudge the numbers there too. You can kind of take them and get them to where you want them. All right, so that's just on the top of the hook shank. So you've seen those guys who are having, you know, white on the bottom, uh, green on top, whatever the case is, that's how they're doing it. Now, I would take, if I wanted white, or if I want to just keep going with my black belly, I would now at this time, cut another chunk about that same size as that olive and I'd put that in that place, spin it there, do the same thing, I'd hold it in place with my finger to stop it from uh, rotating, around, rotating around the hook shank and that's how you build the like bi-colored, you know, the top half is different than the bottom half. And you can do the same with like, say if I wanted a little red speck here, I'd take a really tiny piece of, of deer hair and just lay it right there. Now I'm gonna have green with a little red dot and then you know black surrounding it, which looks pretty cool. Um, having like the bi-colored, tri-colored, quad-colored, whatever, um, different things. But um, but yeah, I mean that's basically it. You just keep you keep doing that. You keep building this body up. You keep packing it down as tightly as you can. And the tighter you pack this, you know your first couple ones are going to be very loose wrapped and or sorry, very. Uh, you know, not very dense. You're gonna look at it and be like, man, I see some in the store and they look like they're made out of cork and they're painted, but your first couple are gonna be pretty sparse, um, just how it works. Um, I've never really seen somebody get it right off the bat, so don't be discouraged. 
Um, if yours don't come out super dense right away, it takes a lot of years to get a like a really dense body. Um, this is gonna, this is key for me. I couldn't do it without this tool. Um, I really couldn't. I've tried other packers, the little brassy packers that they used to sell. I can't remember who used to sell them back in the day, but it was just a little, looked just like this, except it was really small or a lot smaller. And it was made out of, it looked like brass colored or copper colored or something. Um, I've used those. This is way better. You get much more leverage on this thing with these little things here. Um, yeah, um, so that's it. You know, you just do that. You, uh, you just keep building the body up, whip finish at the end. And then um, you can refer to last week's video if you want to know how to trim them. Um, and I just covered one style, kind of just like a slider sort of head where it's skinny in the front and kind of gets fatter out towards the back and you put a little collar on it to, or you trim a little collar into it to you know move water and stuff like that but you there's a, look at examples of people done online of poppers and sliders uh, made out of deer hair and trim it to whatever you want to do you know if you want it to go underwater do slider style if you want it to just pop and cause commotion you know make it fat up top and skinnier in the back um so yeah, that's it. That's spinning deer hair. Um, pretty easy. This is the same way you're gonna spin your muddler heads and your um, anything, deceiver heads, things like that. They all done the exact same way. Um, you know, with the same, I, I highly recommend. While you can use, I, I've seen a lot of guys do it with bucktail and things like that. I would highly recommend uh, this stuff. It spins and packs way nicer. Um, and that's how you get those really dense, really dense heads. What size packer is that? This is the large. Um, I bought the Junior when they, these first came out a couple years ago. I bought the Junior the day it came out, and I'm buying the, I have to buy this one, because this one's, uh, for what I do, I tie a lot of musky flies and pike flies and big, big, big ones. So I like the big. Um, and my hands are a little bigger as well. I think the Junior would be better for maybe um, kids and uh, people who have smaller hands and, um, people who are tying smaller bugs. Um, I bet it would be better for that. You still you still get a good amount of leverage. I don't know what it is. I really like this one though. I think the head on this is has more surface area or something. It, it definitely does. But I think that helps for me. Um, I would if, if you're tying bass bugs over, you know, size two, um, I would just go for the big. It's like not much of a price difference. Um, the reason why I had to go with the juniors is because I didn't have the big one when I was getting mine. So um, yeah, highly recommend the Cohen's Fugly Packer. Um, I couldn't do this without it. Um, check out his bugs. His he, he ties, I've never seen better spun deer hair bugs than Pat Cohen's. Um, so he definitely knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, if you have any questions on this or any other fly tying related or fi fly fishing related uh, subjects, don't hesitate to call, to call us or email us or message us on Instagram and all the social media uh, things. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess until next time, we'll do this again next Tuesday. We'll uh, listen if you guys have any um, you know, recommendations or something you'd like to see. We'll, we'll keep our ear out for that. Otherwise, next week we'll uh, think of something else to do. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week.